Good morning, everyone. Just a quick shout out to my MFF family and team and my husband, who I love with all my heart. So this is a true story about a Metropolitan State University student who's also a single mom who also has four children. And while trying to work a, a new career that has upward mobility, she's working three jobs. Then COVID hits. She had to pivot because her world changed. Those three jobs stopped. Her children were full-time at home. So not only was she a full-time student herself, she also became the teacher and she became the sole provider. She had to pivot. And just like she had to pivot, our foundation had to pivot. Mortgage Family Foundation is known for investing in transformational gifts. And we signed the Ford Giving Pledge with them and pivoted with many, many other foundations that changed, that pivoted, so that we could support more families like this student. But how would we identify them? We leaned in on our networks, our networks such as Metropolitan State University Foundation, like the United Ways of the World, like the community foundations, grassroots organizations that had their finger on the pulse when COVID hit. And foundations have that ability to be agile and immediately bridge that gap between when COVID hit and when government funding started. So we start there with this true story about this mom. And I would love to report back to you that because of just our small amount of funding, the mom stayed on track. She got straight A's her first semester, and her students were able to continue their learning and their education. So what happened for us next was we asked ourselves, where is a puck going? And how could we look at philanthropy different? So I leaned in heavily on another trusted partner of ours, um, Sparks and Honey, out of New York City. And they have an unbelievable intelligence system called Q. And we leaned in on Q and said, how could Q help us? And what I'm gonna present to you today is about the future of giving. The first thing that the report says is that giving is about all of us. It's about all of us giving back, whether it's small, whether it's a random act of kindness, or whether it's a large check. But giving is all of our business, and it's no longer just for nonprofits. You're going to see from this report, it's also about how our corporations are going to be able to step up in a bold, big way. Also, the Future of Giving report is an ecosystem. So when I start to talk about the five cultural shifts that have a huge change, I want you to think about how the changes all touch each other. So you can't do one without another. And if you don't know much about an ecosystem, it's where pe some people are givers and some people are takers, but we all have a role to play and a place to be in. So the first cultural shift is existential risk to humanity. And the report really opened our eyes on a few things here. Some of our key findings is we're going to have to have radical restructuring. And what does that mean? So when the report came out, which didn't come out actually until September of um, 2020, what the report taught us is that over one half of all nonprofits only had one month's operating expenses and maybe a six months runway. And that is big in the nonprofit world. So at Mortgage Family Foundation, that's where we put some of our money was how could we help some of the smaller nonprofits make it to the end of the year? We also learned from the report that we're gonna have to embrace artificial intelligence with a really, really careful lens because it will leave vulnerable populations behind. The key to existential risks is coalescing together for our communities. We've got to become community-centric together. We've got to work together and we're better together. So it brings me back to the story of the Metro State University mom. Just the way she pivoted, we're all going to pivot 
And honestly, I don't know if we're going to go back. So um, cultural shift number two, meet youth rising and giving you have to meet Gen Z. They are an amazing group of kids who are unapologetic. They are a no bullshit group and they were born with technology. So they're going to do things differently. Um, they embrace diversity. Yet, you should also know this, our report brought out, the data brought out, that the average Gen Zer is already in debt $14,000. They have a different set of values that they're going to share with the world than future generations have had. The other thing I should share with you about the report is that the Q system looked at millions and millions of data points. So this report is not based on emotion at all. It's strictly based on data. Um, Gen Zers are unapologetic and they show up. So just like the picture, if you haven't met this young little girl, this is Greta Thunberg. And she, at 16 years old, she got 4 million people to show up for climate change marches. 2,500 cities, 163 countries, and on all seven continents. That is the power of Gen Z. Cultural shift number three, diminishing societal trust. We now lack trust in our government. We lack trust in institutions, whether they're big or, big or small. We're lacking trust in corporations. And that is bleeding over into the nonprofit world and it's also bleeding over into a lot of individuals. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet Miss Infodemic. And you would know her as fake news. So how do we curb diminishing societal trust? This is so easy. We tell the truth. So some people, it's so fascinating to me, they would rather be first than be truthful. We have got to change that. And another way, some of the key findings here in our report is that by supporting small grassroots networks, that is one way to get things started. Another thing that the report brought out that I absolutely fell in love with is all about giving circles. So I am a member um, at Impact 100. It's where one woman has one vote, she gives $1,000, and we make a $100,000 transformational gift in our own community. But together, since Impact 100 started, we have given away over $80 million. And I'd like to say, even though we've been around more than a decade, we're just getting started. The report also brought out to us that religion is declining. Yet people need a place to belong. And think about that. Through COVID, polarization is the antithesis of creativity, of collaboration, and critical thinking. So many of, um, if you know our foundation, you know my right-hand man is John Farnham. And John Farnham always says, give what you want to receive the most. If you want love, you must give it first before you receive it. If you want respect, you must give it before you receive it. And if you want to tell the truth, you must tell the truth first, and that will come back. One, uh, the next cultural shift is brand as a benefactor. And this one was a, a huge aha moment for me. Because while corporations do a great job of giving, in 2018, they gave away $20 billion. That is a lot of money, yet it only made up 5% of all giving. And what you'll see in the report is that 68% of all giving was from average Americans in the United States who gave away $2,500 or less. As a brand, we're going to look to CEOs of for-profits, and we're going to look to leaderships of CEOs of nonprofits, and they're both going to have to step up in a new, different way. Again, radical transformation. 
And we're going to see them partner more. Our daughter, who's a millennial, drives a Subaru, loves her Subaru, and we bought a new Subaru. And one of the big values at Subaru is for every Subaru you buy, they plant a tree. So it's a really powerful message. And that's what consumers are going to demand in the future, is that values align based with what they're doing now for profit and how they're giving back. We're going to ask CEOs to step up and be more socially active in their role as a for-profit organization. I know my father-in-law started a company called Cisco Systems, and they have one of the best workplace activisms I've ever seen. But workplace activism happened to be on this list. So think about um, employees right now, especially in large corporations, right? They're activists on the outside of the walls. We need them to bring that to the corporate world and become activists inside the walls. We're going to have to be socially conscious at work because it's kind of here. It's in our DNA. Precision funding, cultural shift number five. Precision funding was honestly scary for me because I don't really understand how artificial intelligence works at a nonprofit. But as I read through this report and understood it more and more, nonprofits are sitting on this major data platform. They have a ton of data, but they don't know how to quantify it. They don't know how to use that. In the future, we are going to have to harness artificial intelligence in a new and productive way. And I always say this, at Christmas time, I get on the Oxfam catalog, and I'll buy my kids either a chicken, a cow, or a goat for a family that lives overseas. But why can't I take care of my homeless guy on the corner? Our precision funding is going to change that. I've talked about this before, small gifts, big impact. We're going to see micro donations come on in a big way. And I know with Giving Tuesday coming up, um, Giving Tuesday has had a hockey stick growth. And I think through um, COVID, they're even going to have a higher growth because we still want to give back. If we, if we still have our jobs, we want to do something. And Giving Tuesday is a brilliant way for you to be allowed to give towards your passion. It also, we're going to have to show proof of impact. And the data is going to allow nonprofits using artificial intelligence to show proof of impact. And lastly, it democratizes giving. So imagine, remember how I talked about Greta Thunberg? Four million people showed up. Imagine if everybody had given one dollar to climate change. That would have raised four million dollars. I know she could have done something really powerful and amazing with that. But what does this mean for me and the single mom? What does this report mean? I've shared a ton of wisdom with you today, but now I have some homework. I have some action items. So I'm gonna recap the five categories. And as I'm recapping it, I want you to think what your role is in giving. Existential risk to humanity. How are we going to collaborate for survival? Youth rising. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for Gen Z. If you don't have a Gen Z plan, you better start working on it today because they are big, they are bold, and they want to change the world. Number three, diminishing societal trust. We have to be open to everything. That is going to make us super vulnerable. We're going to be uncomfortable, right? We've been driving in this lane, and now we're going to have to move over and switch and drive in this lane. And change is never easy, but to combat societal distrust, we have got to change lanes and we've got to change it together. Um, brand is a benefactor. Employee activism. Start a workplace activism in your corporation. Start it today, start it now. And um, precision funding. What I love about precision funding, act like a startup. Be a social entrepreneur. For radical transfer transformation, we have to act like a startup. So I have a gift for you, and this is my gift. Our foundation partnered with Sparks and Honey, but the report does me no good if it just sits on my desk. 
This report is for all of you. So I encourage you to download the report. It's free, it's open source, and it's for the world. And if you absolutely love the report, do me a favor, share it out. I want to leave you with this. The report has shared with us that giving is for everyone. So let me ask you, what are you going to do? Thank you.